All right, got our new patina project here. So we're gonna take these uh, Brooks Brothers for Allen Edmonds. We're gonna take these Chukka boots and we're gonna make a nice oxblood color. Acetone, this is what I have found to strip the best. Some people use alcohol, but I just find that the acetone works the best. So a little cotton balm, we're gonna wipe it on here. All right, so I got both shoes stripped, and this is really where the fun begins. It's starting to add on some color. So I'm going to start with Fibings Oxblood. So it's a good, good base color. It tends to run maybe a little bit more pink, um, and so I use it for a base color, which is good, but um, overall, after I do this, I will tend to go over it um, with the Angelus version of the Oxblood, which is maybe a little bit darker. So this is good for a base coat, um, and then using the Angelus to do a little bit darker uh, kind of accents and antiquing with it. So you can kind of see um, how it goes on there. So we've got our base coat done on both pairs. Now I'm looking at switching over to the Angelus Oxblood. So it's a little bit darker color and I, I tend to like it just a little bit better. So again, this you can tell this fibing has just got a little bit of a pinkish tone to it. This Angelus has got a little bit more red to it and it's going to darken things up a bit overall. I don't have a real strong preference with dyes. You know, it's one of those situations where you know maybe I like the dark brown of one brand and I like the medium brown of another brand and you know the beige of one. So the, each each brand's got all these different colors and you know I feel like they they all have their their place. So not not really finding any one brand to just be really superior to the others. So I've got both base coats of the Angelus Red, or sorry, Angelus Oxblood done on these. And so the next step, I want to add a little bit more uh, darkening, a little bit more antiquing. So actually, I went back to the Fibings Oxblood and mixed in a little bit of black. And so this is maybe. I don't know, three parts ox blood and one part black. And so this is what we're going to use for the, uh, the antiquing. And I've said it before in other videos, I like to have a relatively dry brush. So I, you know, I'm dipping it in the dye and I'm wiping it on a rag or something else before applying it. It can be a little bit wet or brush on areas that you want it to be pretty heavy so like the toe I tend to darken up more so start there and the brush will dry a little bit as you go and then you can use that to kind of fade up a little further so I am doing a straight black at this point just for the darkest uh, areas. So it's going to be on the toe, on the heel, and maybe a little bit uh, kind of around the eyelets. Now even though I'm using straight black, this is still the same brush I was using before. So there is probably just you know, a little bit of red lingering in there, which is fine. I kind of prefer it like that. So a little bit on the toes. Darken it up at the heels and just kind of fade it forward here. And again, I like to use somewhat a, a dry brush. I dip it in just a little bit of dye and then I uh, will tend to wipe it off on a rag.
So now I'm going to do a little bit of black polish on the toes. So this is a little water dispenser. I got this from Shoe Care Shop. So a little shout out to them. And this rag, this little cloth here came from Mr. Renworks on Instagram. So a little shout out to him. So here's what I usually do. Get a little bit of wax on there, a little bit of water, a little, little dab of water on the on the toe cap here. And this is Saphir Patilux Black. Again, I'm not going to film the entire process because it's yeah, probably be working on this for 15, 20 minutes or so to get that mirror shine the way I like it. Uh, but this gives you an idea. So I'd be doing that same thing probably on the toe as well as here on the heel counters. Now, you don't want to take wax up too high. You can see where the creasing is. If you put a lot of wax on this, the first step you take, it's going to crack it. So... You want to stay right here below the crease line on the heel counter too, but there's going to be uh, creasing in here, so you want to keep it below that. But you can kind of see already how this is uh, shaping up, looking pretty good. We'll show you one other uh, little thing. The very last step, typically use a different cloth. This is the High Shine Chamois. This is from Hanger Project. Typically what I do with this, I use this for the a high speed buff at the end. And I find that this really helps to bring out that, that mirror shine at the end. So again, not gonna show the entire process. I'll show you the uh, after shots, but it gives you an idea and it's already got uh, quite a high shine to it. Alrighty.